In this lab, we will neutralize acetic acid in a vinegar sample with 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution. We will add the sodium hydroxide solution from a burette into an exact volume of vinegar solution. First step is to condition the burette with the sodium hydroxide solution. So the fastest way to do that is to fill the burette all the way up with the sodium hydroxide solution and then to release the whole volume, one burette full, into a waste beaker. Then we fill the burette with fresh sodium hydroxide solution and we do not want to waste time and try to hit the 0.0, .0 milliliter mark. We fill it near the top and then record the reading in this case, 6.5 milliliter, that's our initial reading. The vinegar sample will be provided in a small beaker. And when this iMovie was produced, I did not know if you'd already have hand pumps available that would allow you to pipette quite comfortably 10 milliliters of the vinegar solution into an Erlenmeyer flask. If hand pumps have not been delivered when your lab starts, you can just use a burette. That means you need to condition that burette, filling it all the way up with vinegar, then releasing that vinegar into a waste beaker before you use the burette to release exactly 10 milliliters of vinegar into an Erlenmeyer flask. Adding some distilled water and a couple of drops of the indicator phenolphthalein will get the vinegar solution ready for the titration with the sodium hydroxide solution. The first run of the titration occurs relatively quickly, maybe one drop per second. And you can see here, uh, wherever the drops of uh, sodium hydroxide solution land, your acidic vinegar solution turns pink because the phenolphthalein indicator is pink in an alkalinic solution. But when you swirl the Erlenmeyer flask, the pink coloration will always quickly disappear at the beginning of the titration because the sodium hydroxide gets neutralized by the acid in your vinegar. And as you add more and more sodium hydroxide solution, it will take longer and longer for the pink color to disappear when you swirl and ultimately it's just one drop that makes the difference and the pink coloration does not disappear anymore. This is when you have equivalent amounts of acid and base in your Erlenmeyer flask. Now you calculate how much sodium hydroxide was used in the first quick trial and you use that number to calculate your, so to speak, plateau volume, which is one milliliter less than how much you used in total for the first trial. You will now prepare a second sample of vinegar for the second titration. And if your first quick trial used seven milliliters of sodium hydroxide for the neutralization, you will now release quickly six milliliters into your Erlenmeyer flask with the acid. This will lead to some pink coloration, but when you swirl it, it will quickly disappear because this plateau volume, these six milliliters are not sufficient to neutralize the acid in your Erlenmeyer flask. For the last drops that are needed to turn the solution pink, you slow down the drop rate to maybe one drop every five seconds because you want to exactly determine which drop leads to the permanent pink coloration. Then you have a really exact measure of how much sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize the acid and then you can calculate the concentration of your acid based on the known concentration of your sodium hydroxide. And then you're done. All the liquids get poured into a waste beaker and all the containers will then be stored in the sink. And then make sure that you 
Also empty the burettes and flush the burettes with plenty of distilled water. All of those liquids go into a waste beaker. One last thing for the lab write-up. Uh, you learned that uh, acetic acid is a weak acid. And so consequently, if we measured the pH, as you can see here on the picture, the pH would indicate a very different acid concentration than what your titration has determined. And it's going to be one part of your write-up to determine and to compare the two numbers, the acid concentration based on its pH and the acid concentration based on the titration.